Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. If you are new to this channel, then you will soon discover that I make videos about technology and gear mostly. Uh, but today I'll show you some of the lenses that I use with my camera. Uh, I only use vintage uh, manual focus lenses and uh, um, I use Japanese lenses and uh, West German Carl Zeiss lenses mostly. So uh, let me show you. Uh, just two of the lenses, two of my favorite lenses that I use quite frequently. So the first lens I'm going to show you is the Pentax Takumar. Uh, it's a 50 millimeter lens with a maximum aperture of uh, f1.4. As you can see here, I'll just rotate the aperture control ring. Okay, so, so the maximum aperture is f1.4 and uh, it goes to uh, it goes to f16. So the maximum aperture is f1.4 and as you can see it can gather a lot of light and you can get a very shallow depth of field with this lens. This lens uh, was quite popular in the 80s and the 90s. Uh, and was dubbed the planar killer because this lens was made by Asahi Pentax uh, to compete against the Zeiss planar 50 millimeter lens. The image quality of this lens is at par with the planar in my opinion and uh, this lens was also sold at a much cheaper price. The lens is absolutely stunning. The, the bokeh, the 3D depth rendition and the resolution are just simply outstanding. Uh, even after, I would say this lens is about 30 years old uh, or more than 30 years old, still the focus is buttery smooth. There's perfect amount of friction in the focus ring, right? And uh, there's no play whatsoever in the lens. Uh, the elements, the lens uh, elements are just in perfect condition, in pristine condition, I would say. Uh, uh, one thing about this lens, one peculiar thing about this lens is that this lens is extremely radioactive. It's very radioactive because they have doped the glass in this lens with thorium and as you may know, thorium is radioactive. So thorium was used to change the refractive index of the glass in the lens and thorium was used quite often in old microscopes and old optical instruments. Uh, now they use other uh, materials to do the same job, but they are not as good as thorium. This lens will blow away any modern lens in terms of depth rendition and bokeh. Uh, thorium affects a lot of properties in the glass and it gives it a special look. It's quite magical actually. To use this lens with your mirrorless camera, whether it's a Sony, a Fuji, an Olympus, uh, you'll need an M42, which is the mount of this lens, which is a uh, threaded mount. It's not a bayonet mount. So you'll need an adapter. In my case, I'm using an M42 to next mount, or you can also call it E-mount. So I'm using that adapter. Uh, similarly, on the Fuji, I'm shooting with a Fuji right now. Uh, I'll use an M42 to FX adapter and so on and so forth. Uh, yeah, this, this lens you can get for say around um, 40 to 60 dollars on eBay and you will not be disappointed with this lens. It's spectacular out of this world. So the next lens I'm going to show you is actually uh, telephoto zoom. And it's, in my opinion, one of the best telephoto zooms ever created. Um, and you will see why in just a minute. Uh, again, I'm using that lens uh, as well with my Sony camera and also my Fuji camera. So here we have the Carl Zeiss. Okay, so here's the cap. So here we have the Carl Zeiss uh, contacts. 
80 to 200 mm lens. It's a push-pull zoom. So it has a push-pull mechanism for zooming in and zooming out. So what you do is if you want to zoom out, let's say you want, you want to go to 80 mm focal length, you just push it out like this. So now you are at 80 millimeter focal length. You keep it here and then when you want to focus on anything, you just rotate the uh, the barrel like this. Okay, you can focus up to infinity. Let's say you want to shoot at a um, focal length of 100 millimeter, you will go to 100 like this. Again, lock it here and then you can focus and you can zoom in uh, to 200 mm. With the push-pull mechanism in lots of uh, old Nikon lenses and Canon lenses that use the same mechanism, you'll see that there will be a lot of play after a while. Uh, and this lens, although it's uh, about 30 years old, there's absolutely no play. There's perfect amount of friction or uh, we can also say stiction in the lens. I don't know if you can see the aperture blades, but here they are. One second. Okay, it's a little bit too old again. Open at f4, max aperture f16. f4, f16, f4. So this is how it looks absolutely beautiful this is pure perfection right here so yeah it's my currently it's my favorite lens i would say that this is my favorite lens right now i have shot birds with this lens i've shot people with this lens uh i've shot even i've done some macro photography also with this lens using my flash to light up the subject because lighting is extremely important in macro photography so, yeah, I, I would rate this lens uh, 9.5 out of 10. Th th this is as good as it gets. And, uh, yeah, the, the, uh, today only companies, brands like Whitelander and Leica can match this level of quality. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, the durability, the fit and finish, uh, the optical quality is just outstanding, absolutely beautiful. I bought this lens in mint condition from Japan for about, uh, I'd say one twenty dollars uh, yeah, and I think you can maybe get it for cheaper as well if you look hard enough. So hi highly recommended lens, this and the Takuma, both, both of these lenses, if you can handle the radioactivity, if you're not afraid of it, then this is a beautiful lens, absolutely beautiful. So these two lenses are right now my main lenses. I use them to shoot almost everything. Uh, oh, as far as cleaning equipment goes with these lenses, you obviously have to keep them in good shape and maintain the lenses. So I use uh, this brush to dislodge the dust particles on my lenses. Let's say there's some dust on the front element, I'll just flick the particles away like this and then use my blower to blow out the dust. Same thing with the other lens. Yeah, and if I want, I can also use some uh, wipes from Zeiss. They are, uh, these are pre-moistened with uh, alcohol or I also make my own alcohol solution from isopropyl alcohol, pure isopropyl alcohol. I'll, I mix it with uh, distilled water and make a, uh, a cleaning solution from it. So, the, yeah, for example, even the cap, the, it has uh, some lining inside it for uh, uh, providing a perfect fit. Even the cap is so beautifully made that it just sits there very nicely. It does not fall down. It's very easy to remove. Don't have to use a lot of force. It's just perfection.
pure perfect pure Japanese perfection same thing with the uh, Carl Zeiss lens uh, although this lens was made in West Germany a country which you would know does not exist anymore it's the pinnacle of German uh, precision and German engineering I recommend both of these lenses very highly so this was my video about the lenses that I use uh, with my cameras I hope you liked this video and found this video very informative and I sincerely hope that this video would inspire you to uh, look into some old vintage lenses especially Carl Zeiss lenses and uh, yeah thanks for tuning in see you in the next video bye bye take care